What's up guys, welcome back to Newswave. PAX East has officially kicked off and we're starting to get some news and uh, some information, some gameplay and other things based on some of the companies and developers that are attending. Like I said, some are just not. We talked about how Sony, for example, wasn't gonna be going out there, but we are still getting some stuff coming out of it. And one of the big things that absolutely took the internet by storm yesterday is Nintendo's booth and their, and their just their area they've kind of marked off for Animal Crossing. And we're gonna talk a bit about that because it is it is something else what they've done there. Yes, they've shown up with one game, but the area that they've created is, is pretty impressive. Also, we have to talk a bit about GDC because more and more companies are pulling out of GDC and canceling plans to go. That's the Game Developers Conference. And I'm starting to think at this point that there might just not be GDC this year and that it may just overall be canceled. But we'll go over that and more today, guys. As always, if you enjoy these videos, make sure that like button helps out a lot. And if you're brand new here, hit the red subscribe button down below as we push towards 400 thousand subscribers and we're going to start today with the eShop. Now the eShop of course could use some work. It's pretty bare bones and I'm honestly surprised that it still is considering uh, we're wrapping up the Switch's third year. We're going into its fourth year actually after next week and the eShop still kind of looks the way it does and really has not improved a, a ton in the grand scheme of things, specifically for discovery and finding games. So much so now that developers are pretty much taking matters in their own hands and dropping ratings onto the thumbnails from Metacritic in their games. Check this out. This is actually a screenshot that popped up on Reddit as people started to notice that 11-Bit Studios decided to put the Metacritic score into the thumbnails for games like Children of Morta and Moonlighter. You can see the 80 with the Metacritic logo, logo at the top there, and then 83 for, for Moonlighter. This is... This is just strange at this point. Like if, if there was just a five star system for games on the eShop that you can sort by and people get to vote for them, I, I'm gonna say if you've bought it, you can vote on it, right? Like if you've bought the game, at that point, you can leave a five star review as to how you think the game is. Then we can sort by ratings and you can take a lot of the junk on the eShop and just drop it all the way down to the bottom because some of those games like basketball, which is a game I played in this terrible, would get like, half a star or no stars. I guess half a star because technically it turns on, but it's not great. That That's something that still blows my mind that has not happened yet. And we are to the point now where developers are actually putting it in their thumbnail. You can't sort by it, but I guess it gives them a bit of a distinction from the competition around them. And with the eShop, it's either you drop your game to 90% off to shoot to the top of the sales charts, or you do this apparently. Also a developer that we knew was gonna be at PAX East, right? That was gonna be Platinum Games. They said they were gonna be demoing and showing off Wonderful 101 on the Switch, and they did. In fact, we've had several gameplay clips um, off screen and direct feed capture of it. And yeah, the game looks pretty good. From what I've seen and heard with the Wii U version, frame rate had issues, right? It was up and down at times, and it looks like they have sorted all that out. 1080p, 60 frames per second on the Switch, but something else that they appear to have really improved greatly are the load times. Yeah, check this out. Liam Robertson actually did a full comparison of it and found that the Wii U right now was just under 40 seconds. However, the Switch was eight to nine seconds. So they dropped load times by about 75% on the Switch version. We'll see about the other versions on like the PS4 Pro or even I guess at that, I mean the PC. We can see what like a super fast SSD or something can do there. That'd be kind of neat but it does look like Platinum Games, have, they've improved this game quite a bit in this port, this remaster, and yet it seems like they've had a lot of that work already done, right? We, we've talked about this extensively now with that Kickstarter as the game is coming out in just a few months and it looks like it's in great shape already. But hey, if you're a wonderful 101 fan or someone like me who really has wanted to try it out on something other than the Wii U, Couple months, we can pick it up and uh, see what they've see what they've done here with this remaster. Also, we did get the PlayStation Plus games for next month, and uh, well, one of them is good. That's Shadow of the Colossus. The other one's Sonic Forces. Okay, look, I know some people like Sonic Forces. Not a fan myself, but PlayStation Plus, of course, are games that if you already play online with your PlayStation 4, you can go in and just click buy or own, and it'll just add it to your library. I absolutely recommend checking out Shadow of the Colossus if you have not at all yet. Fantastic game, absolutely worth checking out. But Sonic Forces, I guess it's there. You can see what you think about it. Uh, but it's not like Sonic 06 bad, but it's definitely like lower tier for some of the 3D Sonic games. But hey, those are your two PlayStation Plus games coming up in March. 
definitely check out Shadow of the Colossus. And guys, with some of the quick news out of the way, let's get into the bigger stuff. Let's start right away with GDC. There have been concerns around health with CV currently spreading, and it looks like after we've seen PAX East where developers and companies have pulled out from it and just canceled plans like we talked about Sony, for example. It looks like GDC is getting hit pretty hard right now with cancellations themselves. We, of course, already talked about Sony said, yeah, we're not going to GDC, which is the Game Developers Conference. It's a pretty big deal for the PlayStation 5, something we don't really know a lot about right now. And you figure they might wanna go there, sit down with the developers behind closed doors that's a bit more secure than doing an email chain, right? Uh, you figure they'd want to do that and just kind of see what they can do with some of the developers there and maybe work out some future plans for PS5 exclusive games or content. But they're skipping that. Same with Facebook and Oculus. And now we have a whole slew of cancellations that started to kind of come out yesterday. This includes Microsoft. Microsoft is not going to GDC. That is a big deal. Now, they will still do some streaming, some different presentations that they had in mind. Some of it is gaming centric, actually, as they will have some of their developers show some behind the scenes stuff for developing some of their games like Gears of War. They'll also have some of their different developers in Exile, for example, Double Fine will all have some sort of presentation through streaming. And I think, you know what, for us anyway, that's fine. Like streaming, I mean, a lot of us aren't going to GDC. So if it was a big streaming event this year, I think we'd be okay with that for the most part. Like if there was a uh, some kind of really cool live stream from Nintendo, for example, like they've done before where they would hold it as like an actual panel, but it was just live streamed online and you can see the development of Animal Crossing. That's one of the panels they have currently lined up for GDC next month. But Microsoft is opting to do that. Facebook and Oculus also opting to do that. However, outside of those companies, we also had Iron Galaxy, for example, say that they were not going to be going to GDC. And then a really big one based on what they've been doing with their Epic Game Store, that's Epic Games. They're also not going. And of course, they also have Unreal, the Unreal Engine. You figure Game Developers Conference, Unreal Engine. I want to talk about that there. And then also, of course, Epic Games likes to try to get exclusives for their platform right now, the Epic Games Store. So the fact that they're not going, yeah, that, that is a pretty big deal and definitely a big blow to GDC. But Microsoft and Sony are not going. Those are two of the big three that you would expect to be there. Nintendo, at the time of this recording anyway, still holding out that they're going to GDC. But I think if Nintendo does cancel, I don't really... I don't really think GDC will happen. I, I think at that point they'll put something out that says, yeah, we're probably gonna be canceling this event just because like no one's showing up. <laughs> You'll still have some developers show up there, of course, but for the most part, a lot of the bigger names won't be there. And that would be a, a very small, very quiet event without them, I would say. Even Jason Schreier is not gonna be going and he himself says that I wouldn't be surprised if it would be canceled later on today. Now this was yesterday, of course, that has not, that a press release like that has not gone out, but. Friday might be the time where you do that. Like Friday later on in the afternoon, you kind of drop that out there and then hope that by Monday, we're all moving on to something else. But uh, we'll see with GDC. However, at this point with kind of the concerns around health and CV spreading, I'm not too surprised, especially after what happened with PAX East. But keep this in mind too. We're not that far out from E3. So if this virus doesn't get under control and to the point where these companies are at least okay to go out to these big conventions where a lot of people gather, that's the next event I would look towards is saying, well, what happens with E3 if this is still not contained? Will people start pulling out from E3 and will that be a quiet event? Something to uh, keep in mind there going forward. Next up, let's talk about Nintendo's presence real quick at PAX East because from what I have seen, that is like the big focal point at PAX East. Everyone is talking about Nintendo's display there and it is all Animal Crossing themed. And I have to say from the video, the pictures, all the stuff people are sharing on social media, it looks actually really, really cool. Now, it, what I what caught me off guard is they put out an entire trailer for PAX East with this whole presentation they've put together here for Animal Crossing. And of course they have Tom Nook there and a lot of people taking pictures with Tom Nook holding their wallet. Now Tom Nook will hit you with that, that, that quiet 50,000 bell loan and you'll come home and there'll be a third story on your house when you didn't ask for it. That's, that's his game. He doesn't need the wallet with a couple of bucks in it, right? But, but I, I really like kind of the setup here. It's pretty large and yes, you can play Animal Crossing, but something that I noticed was everyone was more enthralled with just what they set up there as opposed to just playing Animal Crossing. I think some of that has to do with pretty much everyone who was going there to see Animal Crossing 
already buying Animal Crossing, sure they'll play it for 20 minutes, but you're not gonna get a lot out of a 20 minute demo for Animal Crossing. Everyone was just having a good time there literally walking around a real life Animal Crossing setting and it looks pretty neat. The part that uh, I thought was really cool was the water itself looks like it's actually moving and it seems like they pulled that off with some pretty cool light tricks and things around kind of the blue. And it, it does look really, really cool in motion. So that was probably the, the best part of that whole thing there. But leave it to Nintendo to show up big. They, they do this with E3 as well. And this should tell you how big of a deal Animal Crossing is for Nintendo. What is at PAX East right now is basically an E3 setup that they would have. They did this with Mario Odyssey from what I remember and they've done it with other franchises like Pokemon too. So looking at this, yes, Animal Crossing is going to be getting the big time treatment from Nintendo and I wouldn't be shocked if it sells, like I said, 15 to 20 million copies, no sweat overall, easily. And uh, it's already jumped to the top of the Nintendo Switch eShop. Yeah, easy stuff there. But hey, gotta say, if you're going to PAX East, Definitely go by the, the Animal Crossing booth. I think most people will be because it, it's this massive thing in the middle of PAX East and it looks really, really neat. But let me know what you think about this guy, this uh, this whole setup here from Nintendo with Animal Crossing and Tom Nook hanging out there down below. Next up, let's talk a little bit about dreams, but a little bit about dreams and what I thought could happen, which is that the creators in dreams could actually get a job in the games industry because that has now happened and this is probably gonna get people really, really excited as this news starts to spread. I mean, consider that. You can buy a game, create a game in that game and then possibly be scouted by game developers and start your entire career because of Dreams. Isn't that crazy? Because if you consider what Dreams is, it's a way to remove the coding barrier to get your creativity kind of flowing and create something in a virtual space and make it into a game or an experience. That's actually pretty neat. And the game engine itself, building is, is actually really robust and people are doing some really cool stuff. We did a whole video on this and kind of looked at some of the stuff there and that's just scratching the surface. We'll check this out. Now in Dreams, a user by the name of Jimmy Jules 153 actually created an arcade shooter by the name of Blade Gunner. And after this, they were offered a job by a European video game developer. How crazy is that? They put this out there, it gets thumbed up like crazy, right? People can leave like thumbs up, good job kind of thing on Dreams, and then it gets shared out on social media, which is a big deal for Dreams. If you make something really, really cool, and it's a game that people are enjoying, and it starts to really break out through social media, you will have companies and developers and people scouting out talent who will see it on Twitter, for example. And at that point, they could seek you out. And we've had different companies seek out people who have been behind fan creations, right? I mean, look at how Sonic, uh, we had Sonic Mania come about. That was from a lot of people who worked on fan Sonic games who understand how Sonic should be put together. So yeah, naturally, if someone is very good at creating a game through Dreams, well, you could find the next big game developer there and that's what they are doing right now. People are being scouted through Dreams. So hey, if you have, I guess, the idea of ever being a developer in the gaming space, you know what? It might not hurt to check out Dreams and see what you can come up with through just sheer creativity because it seems like already, People are being scouted from this game. And in our last bit of news, let's talk about a gaming legend who has passed away, and that is Kazuhisa Hashimoto. Now, that name may not ring a bell immediately to you, but if I tell you what the greatest accomplishment, I guess you would say, in the gaming space from Mr. Hashimoto is, you will immediately know what I'm talking about, and that is the Konami code. I mean, you, you know what it is. Hey, look, I'll put a little graphic up here, okay? Think about what you may have put in with Contra, because a lot of people know this as the Contra code. It is, of course, up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, be a start. And immediately you get, what, 30 lives in Contra, and it's been used in several other games as well throughout Konami's history. It's even been used in Dance Dance Revolution. Yeah, it, seriously, that was a code there. It's been used in Castlevania. It's been used in Ninja Turtles, all over the place. And of course, it has transcended video games completely into the mainstream. It's a code that most people can recite straight up by heart. And that's because it is 
I think the greatest cheat code ever made. It was originally made for Gradius, but this was due to it being as difficult as it was being ported from the arcade. So uh, Mr. Hashimoto made this cheat code in order to make it a bit easier to play through and he made it, he made it easy to remember. And it's the point now where we have it down to like a cadence when we're saying it. So pretty cool to see how big this cheat code got. And Mr. Hashimoto, of course, will be remembered going forward. So rest in peace, Mr. Hashimoto. We'll remember, of course, the Konami code or the Contra code as some of us do, probably, I would say, for the rest of time. And we'll finish up with the comment of the day as you're seeing here. This one is from Expanded Sky saying, one of my local Walmarts just pulled out a few brand new Warcraft Cataclysm expansion from 2010 from the back or something just recently. This is, this is talking about how the Game Boy was found in the back warehouse. I do believe that a lot of retail stores, by the way, big box stores specifically, have stuff just in the back. I remember there was that image of Kmart when it was closing and someone had found a Mario Kart 64 box that had slipped behind one of the uh, one of the displays and it was like all dirty looking, still in the plastic. But I've also seen my local Walmart, just uh, going off of here, put out the, uh, the Grand Theft Auto collection for the PS2 that had, I think, three Vice City and San Andreas, still completely sealed, by the way, all three of those, uh, the cases and like kind of the, the sleeve with the discs in there. Yeah, I've seen that pop up. I've just seen PS2 games in general pop up in some big box stores that are probably found in the back of warehouses. But if you go all the way back to where you have distribution centers, there's probably still some crazy stuff hiding back there to check out. You never know. And that's why I've always been wondering if we'll ever get that big find where someone opens a box and there's just like a ton of Earthbounds or, or you know, super rare stuff back there. A bunch of Neo Geos, maybe. You never know, I guess. Ladies and gentlemen, let's go to here for news wave. If you enjoyed this video, guys, hit that like button. Helps out a lot. If not, hit the dislike. Leave comments down below for everything we talked about today, whether it is GDC and the possibility of it being canceled with all these companies uh, now pulling out and saying, we're not gonna attend this year. Let me know what you think about that one down below or the Animal Crossing display or even Mr. Hashimoto and the Konami code. Let me know if you used it a lot with Contra, like maybe I did quite a bit. Thanks guys for watching, have a great weekend. I'll see you back here Monday morning, 8 a.m. Eastern time for Newswave.